Hello everybody, here we go again, positive ex-ante consumption. I love these market figure diagrams, hopefully you do too. Let's get moving, we always start with labelling axis. So with market failure diagrams, it's always on the y-axis, price, costs and benefits. We're showing all three. Make sure all three are put on the y-axis. We have quantity. As always, if you know the market, then apply it on the axis. We start with our basic equilibrium like that. We don't label the curves just yet. We go back to the title, positive ex-ante consumption. This tells us where curves are actually located and how to label them. Right, consumption gives us lots of clues. Consumption tells us that there is an issue with the benefits curves. There is a discrepancy there between the social benefit and the private benefit. We're not in production, so the cost curves are fine. Our MSC is equal to our MPC, which is equal to our supply curve. No issues there. We're not in production, we're in consumption. Right, so it's the benefits curve we've got issues with. And there is a positive externality here. That means that the social benefits curve is to the right. Anytime you see positive externality, the social curve is to the right of the private one here in consumption. So the social benefit curve is to the right of the private benefits curve, implying that there are more benefits than society actually realise or that consumers actually realise when consuming is good. Now remember, positive externality consumption, yes, on its own, this is the diagram, but this can also be the diagram for a merit good. Don't forget that. Right, that means we have a marginal private benefit curve here, and to the right of that, we have a marginal social benefit curve. Once you've done this, guys, you are pretty much there. Then just get the basics of the diagram right. Label your private optimum, which is where MPB equals MPC. That's going to be Q1 and P1. Your social optimum means labelling, where MSB is equal to MSC. Show the examiner you know that's a different equilibrium, and that's showing you something different. Label it with a star, so Q star and P star, indicating the social optimum here. Show the examiner you know that there is an underconsumption, that there aren't enough resources allocated to this product or this service than is socially desired. We know that because Q1 is less than Q star. There is a misallocation of resources. Make that clear by labeling, labeling it as such. Get a nice little touch of that. Examiners will like it. And then we need to show a welfare loss. Now the welfare loss is always the triangle that points towards the social optimum. All right? And that triangle is here. There is only ever one triangle that does that. But the trick of it's always the triangle that points towards the social optimum is very, very helpful. Good little tool there. Then, as always, we go through our mental checklist. First of all, have I done my basics right as an economist? Have I labeled my axis? Yeah, absolutely. Start with that. I always do. Have I labelled my curves? Yes, never forget these things. Have I labelled my equilibrium? Both have been labelled. My private and social optimum, are they clearly different? Yes, they are, very clearly different on the diagram. Have I made it explicit that I've shown the misallocation of resources? Yes, I've labelled it, can't be more clear than that. Have I shown my welfare loss? Yes, well then all the key things I needed to do in this diagram have been done, diagram over, as long as it's big, drawing a pencil and using a ruler. That's that diagram done, a merit good, positive ex ante consumption diagram right here. Practice, 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 and I'll see you for the next video. Thank you.